Okay, well, uh, good afternoon. As, as I said, my name is Andrew Borman. I'm the general manager of the bridging division at uh, Maybe Inc. Uh, we are part of the Maybe Group, and we're a worldwide supplier of steel bridges, primarily for the temporary applications. And today I'd like to talk to you about modular panel bridges, their benefits as part of a bridge replacement program, and how uh, this might fit into the ABC method. So we're all familiar with um, accelerated bridge construction, ABC, uh, for the replacement of existing bridges and the benefits that come with this method. Uh, these include uh, significant savings in time, cost can be reduced, and disruption to the travelling public can be minimised. So conventional ABC projects are great when all of the pieces fall into place, namely there's an area directly adjacent to the existing bridge that's suitable uh, for the replacement of the structure to be assembled, uh, the replacement structure to be assembled and stored. The short-term road closure needed for the ABC can be achieved without too much disruption to the community, and the geometry of the site works for this method of installation. That is, the site is long enough and wide enough, and the topography is good enough for the tracks of the SPMTs if they're going to be used or suitable for the staging um, system that will, be, that will be used there. But what happens if one or more of these conditions is not met? Does the engineer try to make ABC work or is a more traditional construction method appropriate? So the problem faced by every owner when a bridge needs to be repaired or replaced is what to do with the traffic. The simplest answer is to simply close the road and divert the traffic around the closure. That's, that's the uh, choice number one most of the time. Uh, if a detour is not possible, um, and that can be various reasons which we'll look at, um, is the bridge suitable for phased or staged construction? And if those two are not available, is a temporary detour bridge the best option? And obviously we think the answer to that question is yes, it's the best option. So, closing the road and diverting traffic around the project can appear to be the most cost-effective solution, but the consequences of this action can be quite severe. If the diversion is too long, or if it takes traffic through a congested area, the public can become dissatisfied with the project. If the bridge is on a major route, the diverted traffic can block other roads. Local businesses can be affected, and emergency services can also be affected. So, although it's, um, it may appear the most attractive on the surface, like I say, there are, there are problems with it. So how about phase construction? Although this is a fairly common practice, phase construction has numerous problems associated with it. It takes just as long to build half a bridge as it does to build a whole bridge, so the duration of the project will be extended. This will drive the costs up and will also adversely affect uh, the public. Phase construction places workers and traffic on the structure at the same time, and obviously this is a safety risk. And there also will be a construction joint along the length of the bridge, and this will be a future maintenance issue under certain uh, phase construction. So let's consider a temporary detour bridge. Although the use of a temporary detour bridge next to the existing structure appears to be a fairly expensive proposition, there are some very distinct advantages with the solution. The existing road is kept open during the entire project and there's no disruption to the traffic and therefore no increased congestion in the uh, uh, surrounding areas. The permanent work can proceed unhindered and this reduces the duration of the project and therefore reduces the cost. Traffic is kept separate from the, from the workers. Obviously you can see here that there's the work He's the uh, temporary detour bridge. It's, uh, the, 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 the traffic is kept completely separate from the workers, which is obviously going to um, have an effect on, on safety. And no construction joints. You can see here that uh, here's one of, our, uh, one, of, uh, one of the temporary modular panel bridges. Here's the work taking place. And again, it's just an example of um, 
keeping the keeping the traffic away from the work. The general description of what modular panel bridges are. Um, they're made up from prefabricated sections, or the modules, which are typically of fixed lengths. The modules are either pinned or bolted together. And what this means is there's no welding, which means the components are reusable. Common components are used to produce trusses of increasing strength. And the structure of any length can produce, be produced from these parts. They're just pinned together end to end, so you can increase the length. So here's a quick 3D drawing of um, a typical um, uh, modular uh, panel bridge. It's one of our modular panel bridges, uh, needless to say. Um, uh, this is a 4.5 metre section of uh, our maybe universal bridge. These are the trusses. And these are the uh, things that span the gap. And that's the main building block of, of the whole system. Uh, you've got the floor beams, or transoms as they're called. You have the deck system, and then you have a bracing system in here. So it's a fairly simple, it's a fairly um, straightforward from an engineering point of view uh, structure. Um, and uh, this, this drawing shows the various types of uh, truss construction that, that are available. You can see here, it's made up of uh, truss panels. Here they are stacked one on top of the other. And that's typical for uh, longer span lengths. And here we have three uh, truss panels at a single height, put three of them together. And again, that, that will be for shorter spans. So the engineering characteristics um, of, uh, of this type of uh, bridge system. Modular panel bridges are pre-engineered, so there's no original design needed for the temporary detailed structures. Uh, this means that the design engineer can simply call out the bridge length and roadway width and the loading uh, on the drawings. The pre-engineered nature of the system will then give the required design of the bridge. Uh, it's a pre-engineered system, so like I said, with those parameters in place, um, the bridge uh, defines itself. Uh, they are simple to assemble, and the use of uh, standard components lends itself to fast installation with either a contractor's crew or the owner's own crew. For, for smaller spans, uh, these can be built by the, uh, by the, by the owner's uh, own workers. Installation is a strong point of modular steel bridges, and uh, we'll go into that uh, a little bit more detail shortly, and we'll see some examples. Uh, just one thing to uh, um, quickly uh, bear in mind here. One of the features of modular panel bridges is the use of uh, high-grade steel in the primary members. And uh, so you can see a, a typical, um, typical modular steel uh, bridge system uh, includes grade 65 or higher steel in, in the primary members. This has the effect of reducing the weight of the structure, um, which makes transportation uh, more efficient, and it also increases the ratio of the um, uh, load carrying capacity to the weight of the structure. Uh, there is one thing to bear in mind when you start uh, looking at high-grade steel, whether it's a temporary modular bridge or any, any steel structure, really. Um, uh, in order to reap the benefits of that higher-grade steel, you're going to uh, end up with some higher deflections. And um, typically, that's not too much of a problem with, uh, with temporary bridges. So modular panel bridges are typically um, uh, pony truss type structures. Uh, traffic drives through the girders and there's no overhead bracing uh, to support the compression members. So obviously the co compression members do need to be supported and um, what I've tried to show here is how that compression member is actually uh, supported. Um, stability of the top cord, uh, the, the, the compression member there, is achieved by a connection between the floor beam and the truss members. So here's the floor beam, here's the vertical truss members, you've got a bracing system in here, and there's a moment generated um, with this connection and this bracing system. Again, you've got a similar, uh, similar type of thing here. This is known as U-frame action, um, presumably because it looks like a U. The U-frame moment of this connection is developed through this bracing system. You've got a bolted um, triangles, 
and that's what basically uh, develops the moment which stabilizes the, uh, uh, the top cord which is uh, the compression member. The trusses, as I showed in, um, in the 3D sketch a few slides ago there, the trusses in a modular panel bridge can be built up using multiple panels and these panels can also be stacked on top of each other and you can produce a very strong truss using that method. So spans up to 280 feet, width up to four lanes of traffic, live loads in excess of HS25 or HL93, um, they can uh, easily, be, easily be accommodated with this bridge system. And multi-span bridges of virtually any length can be produced um, from this modular bridge system. So again, from an engineering point of view, from an owner's point of view, from a, um, a, a sleeping restfully at night point of view, modular bridges are, uh, modular panel bridges they're tried and tested. We, as, as a company, maybe has been manufacturing uh, these type of bridges uh, for over 50 years. I'd just like to take this opportunity to point out that we maybe have supplied over a thousand bridges here in the USA, and we have a 100% safety record with that supply. So I said they're, they're tried and tested. Um, their history goes back to uh, the 19, uh, 1930s. The original modular bridges were the Bailey Bridge um, and the, and the Calendar Hamilton Bridge, um, both about the same time. Um, both developed in the 30s. Um, the Bailey Bridge was developed uh, for use by the military, specifically aimed at uh, military use. Uh, they were designed to be easy to manufacture, easy to assemble, and capable of carrying the heavy military load. Today's modern modular panel bridges are basically a development of the original Bailey Bridge. Uh, to a blind man on a fast horse, they look very similar today as they did um, you know, 80 years ago. So through continued development, today's modular panel bridges have properties and performance characteristics really equivalent to permanent structures, permanent bridges. Uh, High-grade steel has reduced the weight of the structure while increasing its strength, which leads to greater load-carrying uh, load capacities. The tolerances have been tightened, which leads to a stiffer and quieter structure. And computer design, robotic production, has improved both the quality of the system and the efficiency of the system. Uh, most states in the U.S. Um, have used modular panel bridges as part of their bridge repair program. Um, a lot of states have them in their inventory um, or just uh, specify them for use on bridge replacement uh, projects. Several states have also um, installed modular panel bridges as permanent structures. Although they're sort of specifically aimed at a temporary application, um, because of the, um, uh, the way that they're produced today, they're perfectly suitable for permanent applications um, on, on quieter roads. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, uh, maybe we have a 100% safety record uh, with the supply of our bridges here in the USA. So just a few examples of uh, the type of thing that we're looking at here. Um, again, this is a uh, modular panel bridge. You can see here uh, the, uh, the truss panels. Um, uh, and the, the, the floor beams and the decking system uh, span between the truss panels here. This is a 200 foot um, long single span, single lane bridge. Uh, this was leading into the uh, Williamsburg Bridge in Brooklyn, New York. This was, uh, this was in place for about 12 months. This is Route 879 in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Um, this is a 250-foot clear span bridge. It has uh, a 30-foot roadway, suitable for two 12-foot lanes with shoulders. And, uh, you know, just for scale, uh, there's a um, full-size dump truck. Uh, and again, this was in place for about 12 months. And this one is in, uh, this is on Interstate 83 in uh, Northern Maryland. 
uh, about a 300 foot two span bridge again with a 30 foot roadway uh, suitable for two lanes with uh, with shoulders and this was in place for about 18 months Uh, maybe it's bridges um, and modular panel bridges generally uh, can be also be used as temporary pe pedestrian bridges uh, you know as you can see in these photographs uh, so although they've been designed to carry heavy traffic um, they can be used to carry lighter traffic and, and pedestrian loading as well as I mentioned earlier installation is easy I can just quickly flick through the um, the installation methods here. Is that possible? Uh, that's possible. Um, the governing design would then become uh, carrying the crane itself. Um, so, if there's any way that you can get um, uh, the crane beside the structure. Um, uh, that would be better or um, one of the things that um, uh, you can see here is they're designed to be launched into position so you um, build it on on one bank and push it across you build a, what's called a launch nose on the front you push it across the gap and then there's no need for anything in, in the waterway now you say you've got about 200 meters so you'd be putting some piers in there um, yeah, it, it, same principle applies. You just um, put the rollers uh, on, on the piers and you can just roll the whole thing into position. That's what the whole system was really uh, designed around, uh, was building it on one side and pushing it into position. Uh, about 280 feet, so about, uh, what is that, about 80 meters, is, uh, eight, 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 85 meters, uh, something like that, is, is the upper edge or, or the upper limit of, of the spans of these type of bridge. Anything else? Very good. Okay, thank you.